Hi, I'm Cameron, and I don't just read comics. Sometimes I watch them as well. On today's episode of Cameron Reads Comics, my friend Hannah and I are going to be going over Season 1 of Jupiter's Legacy that has recently been released on Netflix. This series is based on the all-star comic of the same name written by Mark Millar and Frank Quietly. Before listening to this episode, I highly recommend checking out our last two episodes before this one, going over Jupiter's Legacy Volumes 1 and 2. Just a warning, there are going to be full and complete spoilers for Jupiter's Legacy Season 1 on Netflix. Remember to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at Cameron Reads Comics, and make sure to clobber the like and subscribe buttons, as well as leave me a five-star rating and review on iTunes. Now, here's your episode on Jupiter's Legacy Season 1. Hannah, and welcome back to Cameron Reads Comics. Um, that thud was Hannah's phone yeah, that she apparently sorry. just threw on the table. It's fine. Um, it's That's how I feel about what we're about to talk about, so it's fitting. Dang. <laughs> well, illusions. Okay, so Hannah, this is actually, for those that have listened and are currently listening, this is a third part in our series on Jupiter's Legacy. And a dramatic s- conclusion. And we'll talk about that. <laughs> no, our dramatic conclusion. Episode one, two. You know, and I now think this, this a, is the this is the wrap up of Jupiter's legacy. I don't know if it is, and I, this won't be a five week series. But okay, season one. I just mean like I want to do not even that. I want to read the other two volumes because I feel like they were so the, the like the prequel books. Yeah, because the show had almost nothing to do with what we read. I know, and so we're gonna talk so we, about that. I feel like why did we read what we read? Because that's the order they came out <laughs> no, in. I know that. I, I know that. You know what? <laughs> I'm just being an asshole because Frick Millar World because that's the publisher or it's, it's Image a terrible Com- name. It, it's Mark Millar. That's his name. He's it's oh he, I he's thought you, I thought you said something else. Wow, <laughs> I'm telling <laughs> I'm telling him he listens. Um, and so pretty much what what were we saying? You know, with Millar World being the publisher and everything, it was, you know, I just read it in I read the books in accordance to their publishing. Yeah. And then I'm like, you know, why don't why didn't we just wrap it all in? And maybe contextually, the show helped. Did you read more than comic. what you had me read? Like, have you read no, further? No. Okay. No, you and I read the same amount. And actually, that brings me to my first question. Actually, let's oh, just go into wow, the wow, 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 wow. What? That was a great transition. I know. We're just we're all over the place. No, I literally was well, bringing you said, us back. Never mind. Okay. What do you want? Nothing. Apparently, it's too early in the morning. Um. The coffee hasn't hit yet. Cameron's been up, though. But Well, we haven't seen each other in a while, and so we we have a lot of, like, fighting to do. Yeah, we do. <laughs> That's just our MO. And there's no <laughs> no platform like this one for a good tussle. Um, okay, so, Hannah, how, yeah. did, how did you like the series, just, like, the television show? Like, just, like if I hadn't read the books and no, I was just watching no, the show? Or no. just as the show? Just, like, as the show. Terrible. How- Really? You thought yeah, it was completely it was pretty terrible? Bad. Oh my gosh, it actually, bad. I didn't think it was like terrible. Okay, so remember I texted you after the first episode and I was like, yikes. Yeah. But then I watched two and three and I yeah. thought, oh, okay, it'll turn around. And then four, five, six, seven, eight. And I was like, nope, didn't turn around. Yeah, no. If I, anything, it like peaked a little bit in the middle and then got really bad again, in my opinion. Wow. Okay. You know, the... the the sh- the show and I mean this in a way where like it wasn't in the comics it really departed from yeah oh yeah well it, uh, yes from what I, we know I mean I just mean like initially like you know the inciting incident with Black Star entirely different in the show True. than in the comic and I was like in my head I, as I'm watching I'm just like why are we t- spending so much time with this character like why are we spending so much time on this one fight that happened you know That's true. I was like okay that was, that was a big well, but then then he's a clone, and then it it yeah. led it led to something that paid off, in my opinion, something that paid off incredibly minimally. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, you know, I this I think for me, 
so wait, your initial thoughts were it was terrible? I, I interrupted you. Why did you think it was terrible? <laughs> My initial, initial thought yeah. was that it was... it. Okay, well, there's a couple of things. I think had I not read the comics, I might have had a different opinion about it. I think I was wanting it to be closer to source material than it was without realizing... They're going to be different. Well, one, that they're going to be different, but two, that they're that they're using material from the books that we didn't read. So I, I, I assume, I'm, I'm assuming, I actually don't know that that's yeah, true. Yeah, we don't know. So either it's out of context or it's like they, and, and I, so I, once I readjusted to being like, okay, I'm not like, I'm not going to look at this like I'm reading or like I'm watching something I've already read. I'm going to just watch it for, it's just a TV what show that is, I'm watching. Yeah. yeah. And then I started to like it a little bit more. And then I liked when they gave us a little bit more of like, Chloe's background because I'm um, in the books that we read you meet her at like the very tail end of her of her being like a party druggy all of that stuff like yeah. we don't get a lot of time with her being like they just talk a lot about her being kind of like a crazy off the chains person and you can't keep track yeah. of her and so it was, it was I was like oh this is like her like backstory and then you meet Hutch and you get to see how they met Whereas, like, where we jumped into the books, none of that storyline is there. Yeah, and I don't think that's in the prequels either. Oh, okay. But so I liked that. Yeah. Like, I mean, then I was like, oh, this is cool. Like, I'm I'm getting context to her, and I'm enjoying that story more. And Brandon's not bad yet. And, like... Yeah. And you really, really, really are, like, rooting for him. Yeah, yeah. And you never really... Not a ton in the... And so, I don't know. It was just so... I just feel like they were so different. That it was not this, I did not, they were not the same stories. Yeah, no. I, and I, what I didn't like either was the acting. Yeah. And I I think I texted you, I like all those actors that are in it. Like, yeah. Leslie Bibb is wonderful, but yeah. like, not at all in this. And like, Josh Duhamel's fine in everything. I mean, when I date with Tad Hamilton. Oh, changed my life. Exactly. Game changer for Wait, storylines. It's him, Kristen Dunst, and Tover Grace? Uh no, it's Kate Bosworth. Okay, thank you. I mm-hmm. tried my best. But it also was one of one of the early two thousands pop um, superstars. Yeah, the the guy who's the older um, Walt or uh, Sheldon. Walt. <clears throat> well, Sheldon's Josh Jamel. Yeah, true. But the older Walt is from The Crown. Oh, who I love. Was it was it two different actors? I thought was it the same guy. Looked like the same guy. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, yeah. I don't know why I said the older one. He looks much more like his character in The Crown when he's older. So in my head, I was just like, "Oh, that's it." He, because he actually they do the same thing in The Crown. He's he's a younger version and an older version. Dang. And then the younger, then we see him at the end, older. Um, Hutch's dad. What is his, what's his real name? Uh, uh Bruce Hutch. It's something Hutchinson. Something Hutch. George. Yeah. He's from um, the 90210 reboot. Oh, which wow. Which I also loved. <laughs> I love that. I love that for you. So there was a lot of actors that I was like, oh, this is great. Oh, this is great. And then they're all, they all tie back to me being like a teeny bobber. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. And it's great. Or but like then, a fan of the Royals. Oh, well, yeah. Well, oh, that's true. Watches The Crown once. I'm like, he's in like The Crown. Like a month ago. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, so, okay. How did you feel now this, okay, Sorry, that was that no. Was that was a great like, answer. That was that was. I asked you a question. You answered the question. You're chilling. Um, I'm just thinking about like how do we feel. Like, there's some departures in this show that I really liked, and then there's some that I really didn't like. Okay. You know what I mean? And that's really it. Like, like, like Brandon. I liked Brandon a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like I like him in the show because I'm like you know in the in the comic he's just kind of an arrogant ass. He mm-hmm. doesn't know if he wants to like try and help his father mm-hmm. or not. Um, I think we're gonna kind of see his spiral in the next season if we get there. Um, yeah, because it's like oh man, my dad and we can, we can go full spoilers. My dad didn't save me or something. You know what I mean like he he wasn't willing to take a life to save my life. Whatever. Um, but really, with with that, I was just thinking about you know I liked I liked him like we we see him pining for his dad's attention. Mm-hmm. I like that they gave him a suit, and actually all the suits in the show I really did enjoy. Yeah, I, I think they really like costume design I think that was 
where they put their money. Yeah, the utopian suit looks so good, and mm-hmm. I love all like yeah, I realize I'm just suits with a texture. That's my that's my jam. I like love textures. Thing for it. Yeah, like like Henry Cavill's Superman suit with texture. Um, like the Spider Man girl I sent you yesterday. That was weird. All right, I do not condone that message. I'm not. Hey, for the fans, uh, that was just some sort of cosplay thing that Hannah sent me about a girl <laughs> skimpily as actually the PS4 video game version of Spider Man, um, being chased by a naked Venom. I didn't even basically. watch it all the way. I did, I just I just watched Spider Man run towards me, and I'm like, I'm not comfortable. I'm, like, I'm not old you enough know, to watch this. You should have waited because the Venom part is weird. So much worse. Okay, well, I'm so glad I didn't. But I'm um, going back to going back to like I don't know what I like. Some of the departure stuff was good, and then some of it, obviously, like I said, I really didn't like. Um, what did you not like? Uh, I said with Blackstar, I really didn't like how much time we spent with him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, oh, we was a clone. I'm like, that changes everything. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. Come on, guys. And then. Which in a weird way they had to do, I guess, to get to the. The storyline with Walt. They didn't have to. I disagree. I think that was just kind of a big waste of time. But how else would they have. Well, that's I think he, I think thing. I think There's his a thousand con- ways that they could have exposed him as exactly. being like the actual ultimate villain. Yeah, I think I think his conversations with Brandon could have been much more like explicit in mm-hmm. his intentions and just trying to get him to ponder. And I think with the flashbacks, you see the resentment that Walt has towards Sheldon. Oh, yeah. And so leaning in, he like literally was just didn't you know was very pleasant with Sheldon in the future. And I'm like very pleasant. And I'm like. You, we need to see at least a little bit of disdain. You know Which what I mean? was good because they didn't have that in the comics either. So when he turned on his brother, it also was like, why, why do you hate him so much? Like, sure, he's okay. Yeah, he's annoying. And like, yeah. he's very self-righteous. And I don't like Sheldon at all. At all, at all. Afterward, like in, in the comic, you don't no, like no, no, him? In the comics, I, I kind of was fine with him. Yeah. In this, I'm like, I can't wait to see you die. Yeah, like I did not like him. Yeah, I was like, wasn't the worst. <laughs> yeah, and I get it. And like, uh, it was even yeah. his flashbacks. I was like, "You suck." Yeah, I'm like, "You're just a crazy person." Yeah, and so I was just th- like, anyways. and the way he treated him, the way he treated Brandon after he saved his life was just like, I, I just could not handle. Him. I even, even, um, even with Grace, I was like, she's so much better than he is. Grace, that's his wife. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, we'll we're, we'll let, we'll get into characters later. Let's get into the next one. Actually, just as a fan, and maybe this show isn't the best like example, but like, how did you feel uh, to read the source material as the comic and then mm-hmm. walk into an adaptation? Like, how was that experience for you? Because I know you you watch all the Marvel movies, but you haven't quite read Marvel comics. You yeah. Uh, of of all the comics I've given you, this is the first that was actually adapted. So how did that? play out how'd you like it because it's a unique experience it is and i have a little bit more like a little bit more sympathy for you now what do you mean because i give you every time you have an opinion about a marvel movie and then you compare it to the comics i i'm like oh shut up yeah and now i'm like i get it when you 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 think you're you think you've got a story a certain way and like you're used to this now, but like I said, I I had a really hard time getting over the casting <laughs> because they weren't what the books were and they weren't what I yeah. pictured and they weren't what I thought I was getting. I mean, I actually think Brandon was pretty good. Oh, Brandon was pr- Brandon like, was very like close. spot on, but like Hutch, I was like, huh? Yeah, and I I'm, he's like a blonde, long. I was like, I was so confused about how almost, they casted who they cast. Like, and you were like, you gotta let that go, Hannah. Like, that's just what they do. Like, people don't get cast the same I'm, I'm as the written. R.I.P. Redheads. I get it. But <laughs> we have to stop that because <laughs> people are going to think I'm actually racist. I'm not. I do it just. I, I want. Know. Hey, I know. shoot me for wanting Daredevil to be a redhead. That's my favorite, <laughs> and that's my representation. It's fine. Um. So yeah, then like, but then, like I said, like middle of the season, I got used to everybody being who they were, yeah. and then I was totally fine. Yeah. Like I was like, okay, this is just not, and I, I don't know. I don't know if it would have been – if they had stuck more closely to the comics, I don't know if I would have had the same opinion. But I think I just was like, I don't know what I'm watching. Like, this is not what I thought. Yeah. This is not th- – these are not the stories that we read. Yeah. 
And so it was like that, and that's it was, and it wasn't because there's dialogue like explicitly taken, and even sometimes, and maybe you feel this way in the delivery, like uh, for Hutch, it was when you know he's in the pub, the two guys come up to him, just like we saw the shark thing, and he does shark infested waters, and I'm like. I don't know why, but I hated it in the show and I loved it in the comic. Yeah, I didn't like it in the show either. It was like a, it was, it was poor, poor, poorly executed, I felt like. Yeah, like, I think what we saw most was like Hutch. And the scene with, um, uh, is Blackstar the big zombie weird looking guy thing? Yeah, the guy they fight. Yeah, um, when Walt like takes him to like the beach. And he does the whole thing in his yeah. head. The, the way they the way they took that from the comics and then put it in the show was so bad. Yeah, I was going to ask, how did you like the... Uh, the? I think the power levels changed. Well, even to the point in the show, they didn't even quite do that. They weren't even able to manage that. Because right. they, they changed the power levels. And so instead of you know them just murking Well, Black he didn't Star, die the way he died in the, in the books. Exactly. And I, I was... I was going to go into that, but it's just like, they changed everyone's power levels. And I, I'm like, I think to the point where I didn't, I didn't like it. Like, I didn't like how they changed the power levels because in the, in the book, one of the most mesmerizing and I think creative parts of the series is that they're so overpowered, but it's like with, with them being that overpowered, the villains becomes, become that much more terrifying. Yeah. And, 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 and the whole scene of all of them you are mean like to, the utopian yeah, is I mean, overpowered. No, I mean, Walt. Like, Walt is, oh, like, oh, oh. he couldn't, okay, the guy was able to break his, like, mental barrier. Oh, right, right, right. And right. I was like, what? Like, that should not, why is that happening? I'm like, Walt is not, how can he be that competent? No. You know what I yeah. mean? And they, 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 like, play up a lot about uh, Brandon being stronger than his dad in the show. Like, they, or they, they like, allude to it. Yeah. Like, he's going, like... Because you know how Sheldon keeps saying, like, you're not ready, you're not ready, but, like, he's clearly ready and he's clearly, like, more powerful yeah. than Sheldon is at this point. Maybe it's his age or whatever. Um, that's not addressed whatsoever in the books. Yeah. Like, there's no there's no tip that he might be better. It's really just that he's a screw-up is all they talk mm. about in the books. And then, and then Walt's able to kind of, like encourage that more out of him and then you're but like i feel like in the books the whole time i view brandon as just like wimpy and like like spineless kind of like he had no ability to stand up to his dad he has no ability to stand up to his uncle he had no ability to run the country he had no ability to do anything Mm -hmm. and in the movie or in the show they're like making him seem like he's going to be that character who's gonna like overcome and i the way that they're taking it in the show, I'm excited for. Like, I like liking Brandon. Yeah, I like. And I, I hope liked, that that's where it stays. He was uh, his arc in the show. I thought was really good. really good. And like, like was, when they ground him on the farm or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Very Superman vibes, though, right? I didn't like that. I didn't like that either. I, I, I like, meant to ask you that the Superman stuff. I thought that it was, but then I thought I've never read the books, and I. I haven't spent a ton of time watching like DC one. So then I thought maybe I'm just like really what it was is it was Smallville is I was getting like heavy because I watched all of that and I owned the third season when I was little. That's besides the point. Thank you for that information. You're welcome. Uh, that's the vibe that I got, but like a cheap version of, of small. I was like, why did you do that? Why is he on a farm? Why does he kind of look like the guy from Smallville? What's going on? Like, why are we doing this? Like Tom Welling, what show are you on? Um, I, yeah, like, can you not find something more creative? Yeah, and I was thinking, too, with all that, like, yeah, well, it's like, they had something different in the in the comic, and that's what I was like, why are we trying that, to that lean, too. why are we trying to lean into a Superman trope where, obviously, we get that you are alluding to that character, you know what I mean, as, like, yeah. as a, as a symbol, uh, as a framework for this universe, I get it, like, that's the most easily tangible, and especially iconic representations in obviously pop culture but even just in superheroic fandoms Mm -hmm. and so seeing that i'm like okay give but i liked that he was a mechanic in the in the comic i mean he was like Mm -hmm. working on cars and that was his day job and he like just liked to work with his hands doing it on his day with work and i'm like literally just think of anything more creative than a farm like we've been there done that and they didn't and i was like you know, uh, and I'm almost like, you grew up in a city. How come, uh, why did you want to go to a farm? I, I don't get it. I'm like, that That really irritated me. 
If you yeah, can't maybe tell. that was part of the whole like in, like because Sheldon believes in like hiding his identity. Maybe that's why they picked a farm because it was more discreet and. But then also he's out there pulling the plow by himself or whatever the heck that thing was. And that's and I'm like, that's not discreet. For the fans, that's also like totally ripped from DC's Kingdom Come. But anyways, like Superman literally has a ponytail <laughs> and he's like, makes himself a farm. It's just like, guys, come on. Yeah. But um, anyways, okay, so let's just go. I think I, w- I want to go through a couple characters and like their arcs and their... Uh, Great, let's do it. Their uh, separation from the source material. Uh I think the number one, the first one I want to go to is how do you, how do you like uh, the depiction of these characters in the departure from their comic counterparts? So first let's go Chloe. How did you like Chloe's stuff? I don't think that she, I think she's the closest to the source material. Did you like her? I did. Honestly, I thought the actress did fine. Like, Oh, are we talking about like her acting? I'm talking about the show. Like, ca- oh, the character well, depiction. Yeah. I thought and- her acting. Uh, the way that they drew her in the very beginning of the of the first one that we read, when she was still kind of like that party girl, is very much how I pictured her. I think that they did a good job with that. Like they didn't really change. She has the short hair and she wears weird outfits. And I was, I didn't love her hair, but that's just me. Yeah, but that's how she w- that's how she was. Yeah, no, but I'm like you can there's short hairstyles that could work better than that. Okay. That's just really just really a preference thing. That's just it's, a preference. It's nitpicky, right. but you know, I, if I'm I was to- completely fine with her appearance. I was fine with her acting and I think she was the closest to how they depicted her in the very beginning of the comics yeah. before the baby and all that nonsense happens. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I'm like we didn't even get there. No, because I but again I feel like this whole book feels very like prequel to that or sorry this series feels like it was a prequel to where we started reading like that's how I'm taking it kind of because yeah. nothing it's like they're setting everything up for what happens in that book and they're just giving more context as to why characters are gonna do what they're gonna do. Yeah, like I don't know. I just was not. Yeah. But I liked her. I was. Yeah, she was good. You did not, obviously. No, I did. I liked her. I think uh, when it comes to like sound character portrayals and like I guess arcs that I had issues with, I really didn't have any issues with any of her arcs. No. Um, actually, I really one of the, my favorite scenes was when we see her like pick up the dude Nick of Time at the at the club, takes her back. Oh yeah. They wine and dine and you know have a night and then they wake up in the morning and he's like, oh, I'm actually trying out for the union and mm-hmm. could you put in a good word and then. She like punches him, and I'm like, I really liked that scene because it. We didn't get something like that in the comic. It kind of it really puts us in her shoes and makes us understand her, uh, uh, who she is and how she fits and how other people view her and uh, then how she views herself. Mm-hmm. Um, so I really, I really liked that character building scene, and I thought it was good. And she was late for the shoot, and the shoot was funny, and and then she kind of. That kind of happens again, like, a couple episodes later when she's with Hutch, and they've been together at this point for a little bit at least, and um, he has to go, like, do that, like, job thing or whatever, Mm -hmm. and she's, I don't remember what she says, oh, uh, it's about meeting her friend, meeting his friends, and he's like, how do you think it would look if I showed up with the Utopian's daughter, and she was like, after all this, I'm like, that's that's all, like that's all you see me as. Yeah, it's like the utopian's daughter, and I was like, dang, it's, it was just like, that's just such a reoccurring theme theme for her. Very understandable. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's, that's why I, I I I liked I I had no issues with her character whatsoever. Okay, my next one, Hutch. I think, you know, he wasn't. How's this? I'm like. With Hutch and with Chloe and with the UW and everyone, I think that, you know, one of our major critiques on the book was that we did not, like, so much happened in so little time and we didn't get, like, beats with the mm-hmm. characters. And I feel like now on the show, it's the flip side where mm-hmm. I. Too much time? I'm like, some of the arcs didn't, like, again, like, Black Star just really hated that entire thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but you felt like we had too much time with Hutch? Yeah, I'm like. Okay, that's interesting. I'm like, I liked all, you know what, who I liked that we spent time with and was kind of a factor was Sky Fox. I'm like, yeah. we got some of that yeah. like stuff laid out. We get us, we're, we're, but I'm almost like, how come you still haven't shown me how he betrayed everyone? 
Like, how come? Right. And then, um. And also, did you have it at all in the back of your head a little bit? Because we, if they stick to the books, the way he dies. Yeah, there's a. Like, it does make sense. How did you like the? Okay, I guess. Now we're jumping around, we're, but let's we can no, see. No, we're in a pause on Hutch. Okay. How yeah, did you like right. the fight between Brainwave and uh, Sky Fox? Like in his mind, or in Black Star clone's Brainwave? mind. Uh, uh, Walt. Is that his name? Yeah. Oh my god. I was going superhero <laughs> names. <laughs> I missed that completely. That that was a superhero name. He just, you know. Uh, uh, it was stupid. It was like watching two old men fight poorly. It's you know also Hannah the the thing that you and you and I are very critical perspective into this show that we need to have is that like we have we have been so spoiled. By the beauty that is Marvel. By the beauty that is Marvel and DC yeah, and like big budget and also like something like Game of Thrones. You know yeah. what I mean? That changed the perspective and capacity capacity for television. And so okay, when, fair enough. When something doesn't meet like, and I think I I'm not just saying I'm saying that for everyone because I'm like, we've been spoiled and like, always the win. I don't want to I don't want to sit here and like shit on it the whole time. You know, the win is always going to be like more comic book content. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that is a for it, for my perspective. Like, guess what? Even bad, bad comic content is better than no comic content. And so. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So if we shelve the fact that it was cheesy, I'll rip. I'll rip apart the plot, and I'll rip yeah, apart everything course. else, <laughs> special effects and stuff like that. I'm like, uh, I can be a little less crucial on if you make up for it with pacing and everything else. You know what I mean? Because you can't have every fight be like every fight. You know it. Oh no, I know, and I don't because yeah. there were other. I'm not fights, saying that about you. There were you. other fights in the series that I liked. Yeah, I'm. I'm not I didn't. I'm not saying that about you or like any. I just mean like I think that's a perspective that should be taken in this if for everyone right, because right, right, okay. Just recognizing. Anyways, anyways, anyways. Well, I, so going back to wait to uh, Sky Fox and what's his face is fight. The, one of the reasons I was in love with the fight was because it wore its budget on its sleeve. So I'm talking, I'm projecting, I'm talking to myself when I say mm-hmm. all those critiques. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I am, and I'm like, oh my gosh, and I'm like, and also, why would you throw the guy if there's no wall to throw him at? Uh, yeah, I just, I feel <laughs> like, yes, it was a low budget fight scene. That's fine, whatever. I see your point. <clears throat> And I do admit to being a snob when it, because it, because I've been spoiled and watching yeah. really good, really good, high budget stuff. <laughs> yeah, for a long from a us very have. long time. Yeah, but I didn't. It the it did the fight didn't make sense to me aside like outside of yeah. the production of it. I was like the characters fighting. We still don't really know why. Yeah, we don't know why they hate him. I don't really understand where the fight was gonna go like were they gonna kill each other in this fake mind universe that they're living yeah. in and then and it just was sort of like brainwave is clearly clearly very clearly not as strong and that's i don't like that and but in that that's how they make him out to be at least like f- like physicality he doesn't have it of course yeah like his power is right is what he can do to your brain mm-hmm. which is great but like when you're living in this fake simulation, whatever world, his his powers are completely useless, really. And then like that guy, fo- what's his name? What's his name? Fox? Storm Fox? Storm Sky Storm. Fox. Sky Fox. Storm Fox is a sicker <laughs> name, actually. Was there a video game uh, called Sky Fox? Yeah, something like that. I'm pretty sure I used to play that when I was a kid. Uh, anyway, um. Yeah, I just didn't, and then and then when she doesn't, and then somebody somebody says a really cheesy line about like punching like a girl or a girl or something, and then fucking what's her name shows up, wait, and it, she's like, I punch like a girl too or something like that, and I was like, what are we doing with this? I've been thinking about your video game question for a second. I'm sorry, oh, okay, I can't. Okay. It's I think the video game was Sly Cooper. It was a fox, I think, and then there's another one called Ratchet and Clank. And nope. Ratchet was a weird fox thing, or there's a. I'm really hung up on it now, and that's just going to bug me. Okay, you tell me your opinions on it while I do this. On on what? I missed your entire second part. Oh, yeah, it's called Sky Fox. The video game? Yeah. Damn, I just blew it. Yeah, okay, wait. That's exactly what I thought it was. What? Um, <laughs> it's exactly what I thought it was. <laughs> so, I liked... 
why I feel a little bit justified in saying that that fight was just stupid and I didn't like it. It was because there were other fights that I like really did like even if they were more like low budget, like I enjoyed them more. Like the one where Grace uh, shows up to help. Oh yeah, that girl, and then she ends up killing the bad guy. Loved it. It's great. Yeah, and honestly, okay. I. Uh... Okay, wait. We need to. We are going all over the place. Yeah, that was Let's, my fault. No, no, we no. Were supposed it, to be, we were supposed to be with Hitch and then Hutch. Hitch. <laughs> I'm like Will Smith in this movie. You know what? In my head canon, Will Smith's Hitch does exist in this universe. There's nothing that says it can't. <laughs> um, uh, that, his power is love. And he's like, <laughs> you know that song "Love Train" at the end of Hitch. Great, great oh song. Oh my gosh. Um, okay, so wait. With Hutch's portrayal yeah. as opposed, to bringing yeah. it all back, cause, all back to where we belong. You know. Mm-hmm. We were going to, how's this though? We were going to talk about all this stuff anyways, so we yeah. were just getting it out of the way. Yep. <laughs> um, with Hutch, it, Hutch's portrayal, how'd you feel about like, you know what I mean, the way he used his powers and, you know, who he was? Because, you know, I'm very proud to say that he was a villain in this show at first. He was stealing and whatever yeah, he it was. was. And so he was a villain and then he ended up with Utopian's daughter. How'd you feel about their their meeting actually with the car crash and everything? I was pretty down with it personally. Oh, me too. I was it like, was, Yeah. And then him running away from her, kind of loved it. I actually have ran away from a girl before. He's a little bit more of a like, like kind of like a little bitch in this in the show, though. Rightfully yeah. so, he has no powers. Yeah, he has so no it's powers. Understandable. Um, you know what I really wish we could have gotten with Hutch and like his dad. Number one, any scene of them together oh, from their childhood, anything. anything would be great. He's like, that's my dad, and like you know, if, if I didn't already know Sky Fox was his dad, like I don't know if the context clues in the shows could have really lended themselves that well to me. Um, I don't think so until they have a conversation, until Sheldon has a conversation with him. Well, you see, you see the posters in his room and stuff, and in his lab. And- oh yeah, that's right. You see that picture. Which is like literally out of context, and I I mean this, and I'm not trying to be like any sort of way for the for the fans, but it's like literally Hutch in the show is black, and uh, Sky Fox is white. Literally, like yeah, you, yeah, 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 yeah. And I just mean like on if that the, level. If the con- you're right. If the context clues weren't heavy enough, it's not a it's not an automatic conclusion, or it's not really th- something that I would have thought like, oh, is that his dad? Until yeah. they show the picture, or and then even- you'd be like. Yeah. Is that his dad? <laughs> or even a scene with uh, Sky Fox and his wife or whatever and, and Hutch's mom. I'm so curious about who his mom is. I'm so curious. And I'm pretty sure that's an arc in the story too where uh, Hutch, like, like I think, yeah, Walt and Walt steals Sky Fox's girl. There's something about that. Like, oh. Remember, like, like. It was like like all great fights. It said in the book, like all great fights. You know, what I mean, it started between oh, about, about a woman, right. and it was it was uh, Sky Fox's girl, and like Walt stole her, or like you know married her eventually, and da 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 da. But which is an interesting thing because that girl, the, like samurai girl, yeah, was, was w- his daughter, Walt's daughter. I didn't know she was his daughter in the comics. I don't no, think they she definitely was. don't. I don't think he. I, they either don't address it at all, or I just don't think that they wrote it to be his daughter in yeah. the comics. I honestly thought Hutch in the show looked more like the one weirdo clown dude, the the guy who got who went mind to mind with. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. With Walt, I thought yeah. that's who he was in the show. I was like, oh cool, and that's you know they, and then I was like, no, it's Hutch. I'm like, oh okay, yeah. So. But I'm down. I'm 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 liking Chloe and Hutch's storyline, the background as to how they met and what their d- dynamic was prior to them turning. I'm doing air quotes, but good because I don't. I mean, I don't know. We'll have to see where that goes. Yeah, they yeah. They kind of turn good-ish or whatever in the books, but yeah. as of right now, I'm like, okay, this is all. This all makes sense to me. It makes sense wh- how they met what their dynamic is because right now they're like not even really together who uh hutch and chloe like they're but they're yeah. not like an exclusive couple but they like, weren't that way in the comic right either That's, so it's it's, it, it's the foundation yeah so i'm like okay I, like i see the trajectory of where we're going with this yeah um, um and i have no i have no issues with the way that they did either of their storylines yeah i liked i liked uh for the most part i liked Hutch. i just don't think like i don't know i they made him incredibly underpowered too, and I was like, I feel right. like Hutch needed some sort of arrogance, like, and that's what where where I think some of his charm came from in the comic. You know what I mean? He needs needs to be a little like. Uh, he had parts of that, I suppose, though, in the show. Like almost like a like a like a 
Robert Downey Jr., Tony Stark arrogance. Just a hint of it in the show would have helped. Did you not think that he had that in that conversation, though we did not like the execution of the shark infested water scene you do see his arrogance through that scenario though yeah when no, he's I, able to control yeah, the stick even if it's not in his hands i don't know if it's the actor or the director or the writing but like and he did that too with sheldon like that's the other one that sticks out to me when sheldon's like son you're not he's like i'm not your son you know what i mean and i'm like i liked that i like that moment because they but that's when you see how weak he is yeah but i just mean like him kind of being snarky right. yeah that's true i needed some of that like you can't tell me what to do but i'm also like mm-hmm. i needed more of it mm-hmm. um so uh, yeah no i don't i think uh, honestly for all he was just okay uh but now actually let's talk about you know probably one of the more important characters in the entire series uh and if and socially to us one of the most important characters <laughs> in the entire episode uh, of the podcast in general and that is leslie bibb <laughs> Not exclusive, exclusively, but just it's a factor. Wife of the one and only Sam, Sam Rockwell. Rockwell. You know, I found out I was looking at her IMDb. She's done she done a movie with him before, and I just want to watch that movie now. Um, yeah, what movie is it? I don't remember what it's oh. called. I feel like I've seen it. It's like from twenty fourteen. Yeah. Um. So really, what I wanted to say was, like. In the comic, we got zero to no time with her. Absolutely none. <laughs> like, zero. I, I'd say literally probably two a to page. three pages. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it was just like, okay. And like, and one of those entire pages was just her very excruciating death. Yeah. Um, oh, God, I forgot. That's how we're going to have to see her go. Maybe. That being the case. Yeah. Uh, we actually got to know her as a character. Yeah, we did. Yep. We got to know her as a character now. Um, we got to spend more time with her. How did you feel about uh, not even quite Leslie Bibb's f- performance, but really like yeah. the arc that they took her on. Uh, I, I had a hard time getting into her character in, in the flashbacks. Okay. I liked I'm, her as yeah. a. I liked her as the as the mother, as Sheldon's wife, as what's her name? Uh, La- Lady Liberty. Lady Liberty. Um, why am I so bad remembering their names? Because it's the morning. Because yeah, Hannah, it is my last day working at <laughs> the surf shop with Hannah, and oh, Hannah's just, just really in her heart about it. It's okay. The grief I'm already feeling. I'm like, you know what? Here, here's a fun fact for you before we get into anything else. Uh, you, Hannah texted me and she said, can we get coffee? And I thought it was a, let's go get coffee and talk and like vent about me leaving. And it was no, (laughs) could we get coffee before the podcast? And so I was like, I was like, oh, way less sentimental. And I was like, that is what the confusion was. I was like, yeah, okay. The way you were responding was confusing me because I was like, why can't he just say yes or no? Like, we all know I'm going to win be the one to pick it up we know i'm gonna be like yeah, why I was like, yeah. Just, she like just like send me a freaking you, you totally knocked me you're just like hey yeah yeah camera we can go get you're like what'd you say you're like we know i'm gonna be the one to pick it up because you always come late and i'm like well she really didn't want to go get coffee with me now so there was a there's a moment for you that happened in my life oh my gosh i'm just learning about <laughs> that was the root of it <laughs> uh, i just thought that was so funny i was like you know that's when you overestimate your importance to someone else that was really one of those and i was like all right well now and then I'm- i sent you a bunch of pictures from your last last day yeah <laughs> like this will be us tomorrow <laughs> yeah. yeah and i was like wow i was like i'm getting mixed messages <laughs> And then I bought you coffee this morning, and I was like, here's your last day. And yeah, all this it. time, you thought we were going to go have coffee. Mm-hmm. Oh Apparently, hey, it's not that hey, funny. Hey, we can go get... <laughs> no, no. When you get back from your trip and I get back from mine, then we can have more things to vent about. Yeah, sure. I'll be like, man, working working nine to five, it's going to be like what? that. No. I love Dolly Parton. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, going back. I forgot what we were talking about. We were talking about Lady Liberty. Oh, Lady, Lady Liberty AKA and Leslie Bibb. AKA Grace, AKA... Leslie okay. Bibb, a.k.a. Sam Rockwell's <laughs> beloved. That's our beloved. There, yes, therefore. <laughs> our beloved. <laughs> She's invited on the podcast. That'd oh be great. God. I'd love to chit chat. I would die. She's been in the MCU multiple times. She's been in now multiple comic franchises and Talladega Nights. There's do plenty to talk get her? about. What? We, do you think you could get her? You? Do you think you could get her on the pod? You know, I, I try my best. True for the stars. Number one rule, guys. I'm sorry, it's turning into that podcast. I'm like, I'm, I'm Gary Vaynerchuk, but, um, literally, just shoot your shot. 
Like all the guests true. that I've been able to land on the podcast. That's true. It, You've it, got some big ones. It liter- and I've talked to m- m- like honestly 95% of the comic personalities I've wanted to talk to. I love for for just like comic book pundits. We haven't even touched writers yet, but like it all just comes from asking. Yeah. Literally. So I'm like, hey, you know what? Wor- worst case scenario, they say no. I'm a nobody. I can't pay them to be on here. And I j- believe it or not, I'm not making very much money on the podcast. <laughs> Actually not making any money on the podcast. Actually spending a lot of money on the podcast. But anyways, that being the case, it's just shoot your shot. Going back to that Leslie Bibb. That being said, Leslie Bibb and Lady Liberty is well, another... Okay, now that I'm like really just saying all this stuff out loud... There's actually only like two characters I didn't like. Who Be- who did you who- Because now I'm now I'm going back and being like I love Chloe, I loved Hutch, I loved Lady Liberty, I loved Okay, who I, You I, know, I, I don't, yes. I, there's not I I guess there's really only two that I had an issue one. There's only one, two you- that I had an issue with. Okay. Uh but to stick to to Grace's character, um I like I did like in the flashbacks that she's a very like spunky strong-willed no bullshit from the men kind of a character and i like that i like how that sets her up to being able to be on that journey and then get powers and then be married to sheldon and that whole thing um what's interesting to me though is that she is so originally so that way like you know the scene where she's getting fired and she's yelling at all the men and she's like stealing her coffee cups back and she's up on the desk and she's like yelling at this and this and this and talking about how they don't want to pay her and all this stuff because she's a woman and then she seemingly when you fast forward to her now she's very like i really wish i could think of a better word because i hate the way this is going to sound but she seems to be pretty like submissive to Sheldon. Yeah, and, in and the then future? It, yeah. Yeah. And then it kind of starts to shift again at the end when she starts to realize that he's wrong. But it's like she's such a strong character as who she is as like an individual and as a human. And then she becomes very like, well, this is what your dad wants. Well, this is what your dad says. Well, this is what, you know, this is how it goes. He doesn't, we don't take a life. Those are his rules. And then she starts to like kind of come back into being like, just because that's what your rule is doesn't make it right. And she pushes back finally. And I'm like, okay, there it is. But it was kind of like, but I just, I I liked, I like her character. I like, I liked when she killed somebody. I'm going to open, I'm going to open it up to this question, but I'm going to go first. You're up next, obviously, because there's no one else here. (laughs) Thank you. She was my favorite character. Okay. In the show. Uh-huh. Um, I liked, I think she was number one, the most likable character uh, because yeah. we spent more time with her. And like, again, her she's not so abiding by the code that mm-hmm. Sheldon is. Um, and then also her beats. Like the first time we meet her, she is literally just pretty much tearing Sheldon's family apart right. at the business. Right. As I love that. Yeah. I love a meet cute that is like two people who hate each other and you know they're going to end up together. Loved it. I thought mm-hmm. that was perfect. Um, and then she was spunky, but I guess t- to your point, what I'd speak to is that I think because they're old fashioned, and because you know, it, and I mean that in a 1929 is like, when they got together way old fashioned. Yeah. yeah, because of that, I don't think she's quite submissive to her husband because you know she makes she she does make her point at the very end. She kind of comes back into her own. I think their marriage made them partners, and I think there there was a point when she did believe in those principles that he yeah. held sacred yeah because that's true. because they're old-fashioned and she agreed with him and then obviously she had some inciting incidents that changed her perspective on that and then she made those abundantly clear but for mm-hmm. the most part i think she was just a a a, a partner to her husband mm-hmm. and that's i wouldn't call that submissive i would literally just call no, it no you're right that's why i said i wish i could think of a better yeah. word because i don't i hate that word also but then i was it's, like yeah. it's not what i'm trying to say but it's like she became here i got you she didn't have much to do until yeah. and that and that was it. So it's yeah. not it's not like she was she it's not like she was you know not you know being so it's not like she was being subservient to him. It was you know really like her character didn't it have was much like to a, do. There was like a silence to her. Yeah, in there, the middle there wasn't much going on yeah. until there was. Yeah, and, and so whether or not we like that, you know, is is different mm-hmm. than like you know what I mean. I think that part of the problem that I had was that I. 
but I don't know if this is going to jump ahead again, but whatever. I just really hate Sheldon and I wanted more pushback. Yeah. And I felt like even when they were at dinner and Chloe shows up for dinner and it kind of turns into this, that like awkward, like family dynamic fight thing kind of in the very, very beginning. Mm. I wanted her mom. It's like her. It's like it's like Grace defends the kids when Sheldon when it's not in front of them. It's like I like she when she flies to the window to see her and they have that conversation yeah. after she gets out of the hospital and you see that she's that she's really like motherly and like nurturing and like caring for Chloe and has a bit more of like she's got more understanding for her. She has more empathy for her mm-hmm. than than Sheldon does. And then when they're all together and Sheldon's there, it's like nobody stands up. She doesn't stand up for Chloe in those situations. Yeah. And and like that's what the kid, that's what Chloe needs is like somebody to be more on her side. Mm-hmm. And I wanted I wanted selfishly I wanted more of like protection for Chloe from her that I feel like she didn't give unless it was one on one. Yeah. But even to, and also even at to, to, in her defense though, like whenever she, it's not like she didn't question Sheldon at all. Yeah, you know, like when she's like when he says like, oh, I grounded, I or I sent Brandon to look at the autopsy or something, and she's like, that's not a decision that you have a right to make on your own. Yeah, I was like, okay, so like she is that defensive character. She's just not doing it in front of the kids, and that's doing more damage to the kids because they're never seeing. Yeah, who's fighting how for much them. the mom actually does fight for them? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so who's your favorite character? Uh, Chloe. Okay, how and <laughs> I why? I <said> very hesitantly. <laughs> I'm like, so you really liked her portrayal? Is there any, like, beats with Chloe that, like, you really appreciated? I love a good drug addict, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I should have known. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't know. Maybe she's the more, like, she's the more relatable character to me. Because you're a drug addict? Cause I, cause Sorry. I'm such a drug addict who has a terrible relationship with my parents. Yeah, I'm like, that's Just a... Just kidding. There's literally nothing relatable. I have a great relationship like with Like living my vicariously <laughs> through dysfunction is a thing. Um, I No, I don't know. I Yeah, she's completely unrelatable to me. I don't know why I said that. But I just really like her. And she... I think that maybe part of what I like about her is knowing where she's going to go. Yeah. Like knowing where her story is going to go. Yeah, and you see that I like a good I like a good flip. I like a good redemption story. And um I like her with Hit. Why do I want to call him Hitch so bad? Cuz you're really into rom-coms right now. Oh, I am. I always am. Um I I, I yeah, I don't know. I liked I I guess I just thought that out of all of the characters adaptations, she was the strongest. Yeah. I agree with what you're saying about Grace, and I I don't disagree. I don't think it's wrong. Like I think that that was a that she was my second favorite for sure. Good. Um, I like the women in the show, I guess, more than I like the men. And honestly, I think that's a win. Yeah, for sure. Like I'm like I don't know for. It's funny. It's just I think it's so. There is something to be said though about how dislikable they made Sheldon, and I do think that's okay. Important. I was just gonna ask you that because I have made it very clear, obviously, that I couldn't stand Sheldon. What did you, what did you think about him? Um, honestly, if there was a character... Okay, so for all the reasons you like Chloe, um, I wanted to like Walt in that way. I wanted Walt to be my favorite character. I wanted mm-hmm. to see him be vindictive and manipulative, but mm-hmm. they kind of made him a whiny little bitch. Mm-hmm. Uh, True. And so I'm like, with... I know, I'm sorry, you asked me about Sheldon. That's uh, okay. I haven't answered any questions since you've asked me I just think, so. I think, I want, for, for those to be, you know, I guess, principally the protagonist and the antagonist of uh-huh. the series, um... I was really waiting for Sheldon to do something to win me over or do something really cool, but no, he kind of came off as a dick the whole time. Right. Um, and maybe that's him being old timey. Maybe that's like a lot of factors, but I really wasn't. Um, I wasn't a fan, and I I wasn't in love with the portrayal either. And no. uh, I'm like, wh- why that that wig was awful. The wig with the gray hair. I'm like, that was trash. And then the His whole beard. the whole journey. To it, I was just like, this just doesn't look good. I hated the journey. I ha- every time they did a flashback, I was like, ugh, I there's want, a whole I want to skip this. Episode I was six was like all flashback. Down. Yeah, I like. I guess I kind of liked it. You know, for Sheldon, I re- 
I th- and I think I I would believe that this is in the comic his father's death and witnessing that I yeah. love I love that being uh, being the thing to propel him um, and their family losing everything and needing to partner up and I like that Sky Fox were uh, the it wasn't Bruce was it George 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 uh, see you want to call her you want to call him Hitch I want to call him Bruce <laughs> um, George I really liked. Uh, his dynamic i like i like that stuff going on and like seeing them become familial and sheldon kind of balancing out walt Mm -hmm. i liked i guess the younger sheldon stuff but like older sheldon i was like man like you were just not doing they were leaning too much into and i and i get it because it's necessary for the character i just mean like when it was shown i think they leaned too much in like the hokiness of Superman yeah, and yeah. like Captain America when they're doing the language comments when they're doing we're saying we we say grace for dinner I'm just like man like you it makes him dislikable which is good and a necessary part of the character but there's some ways where I want to that's not how I want to dislike him you know what I mean I want mm-hmm. other like uh for for example like uh you know all the way for to bring about Game of Thrones and I'm sorry for the fans who haven't seen it all the, I think the way that Joffrey made himself dislikable, I liked those ways. Yeah. I mean, him being like a punk ass kid, I was like, oh yeah, great. I'm like, I like disliking you for these reasons. Like, it makes sense. Walt having these principles and enacting them, or uh, Shell having the principles and enacting them this way, I don't want those to be the reasons I dislike them and so uh, dislike him. And so, why is it the reason I'm disliking you? You know what I mean? Right. So that's that's really how I felt about him. And then I wanted him to die. I wanted him, and, and I mean, like, in a first season kind of way, I just think that we could have made it all more snappier. Like, yeah. get, give me a Game of Thrones, kill off your protagonist in the first season finale, you know? Like, and that's not a spoiler for Game of Thrones. There's so much, there's five seasons left. At this point left. in time. But. You can't, ex- spoilers for Game of Thrones. There's, yeah, it's over. It's over. It's um, your, your ship has sailed. I'm like, kill, kill, kill him off. Like, do totally, something. Totally. Cra- and I thought every time they cut to the prison when it was super high tech, I thought I was just waiting for it to say like five years later. And I'm like, oh, yeah, like, just give me a hint. I wish that that's where they ended the season off. But five years later, mm-hmm. Brandon and Walton were all just like, wait, what? Like, yeah, that would have some- been way better than the way it ended. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, Walt, you were up to something. And I'm like, OK, the door was unlocked magically. And now we found out who it was. Wow, you know, right? And then it being the girl who knew it, who's a very insignificant character, yeah, clearly because they just killed her right away too, which is his daughter. Apparently, it was just it. It was so there was just so many storylines that didn't connect properly, mm-hmm. and I felt like I I thought well actually actually I thought Sheldon was gonna die because. Because of the book, and it even said in the like title of the episode, it all ends here, and I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the thing though that I realized in watching the show is that because they spend a lot of time developing how stubborn he is and accepting that, like you maybe like that rule is what's getting everybody killed, and mm-hmm. it's going to get his family killed, and it's going to get him killed, and he's still not willing to like accept it i the 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 part of me that wants him to just die and be killed off because i don't want to see him anymore that's my like that's my like lazy writing is i would just be like yeah just like just kill him off just be done with him but i genuinely don't know what i think they could have done the way that they built up his storyline to make him understand the how significant his rule is at or not significant, but like how detrimental it is at killing. Like he, he's not, he doesn't get it. I, well, I also, you know, because even when he's like, I wasn't to Brainy, he's like, I wasn't gonna let him kill you. It's like a hundred percent, you would have. No, he had the heat vision eyes going. He was, he was starting, and then the one girl came in, which also like I hated that moment. But I wanted, I wanted two. I, re- I, I think I wanted two, re- two things to happen. One of two things. Either, number one, let him understand why that can't happen, or number two, show us the reason why you can never do that. You know what I mean? Like, give me the reason why why your code is so unbreakable. Yeah, Because I'm like, all you, did, all you did was talk about it. Show me. You know what I mean? Like, you think that there was a significant thing that happened give, when he was, like, younger or something that's making him, that's making the rule be? Yeah, I think it's his dad's death. Because he couldn't save him. I mean, so now we put our faith and we can try and save everyone. 
uh, no matter what. And I and the code being we don't govern. Love that. Give me a reason though why we don't govern. Like show me. Uh, then number two, give give me a reason why we don't kill. I'm like I don't. Mm-hmm. They you they have sig- like showed me that there's reasons why they should. Shell, give me any give yourself any sort of leg to stand on. And I mean from a writing perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so that was those are my major critiques. All of that being said, so we can agree Sheldon's our least favorite character. I don't know if I had a least favorite. I, him or Walt. I was like, I'm waiting for anyone to do something. Well, young Walt. I didn't like young Walt. Um, yeah, he was a little bitch. I'm just like, oh my gosh. He like started crying on the, so on the mountainside. I'm like, like, oh, I'm like, oh, I'm like, not the time gosh. and place. I'm like, why couldn't we have had this conversation in the office anyways? Um, and I'm like, I just hate that Sheldon had stopped walking. And so they were all just kind of stuck there watching. Like, could you, have, could you imagine being a spectator to that? I'm like, uh, no, that's like a grown man, like sobbing. And I'm like, this is weird. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> that's just, okay. So Hannah, all that being said, what would you rate the series out of 10? Oof, oof, oof. I think you and I are going to have a similar rating. Five? Oh my gosh, you're higher than me. I'm a four point five. Okay, I I was really going between four and five, but f- four felt mean. <laughs> that's why I did. That's that's why I had the decimal, baby. <laughs> but yeah, no, I just think that there was so much more that could have been done. I think they world. I think on the flip side, they world built very well. And if they put some of that into the comic. <clears throat> They, I think they need to draw more from the comic from the pacing perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the comic could draw more from the show from the world building perspective. Mm-hmm. But if that is the critique, then I'm like, neither of those are strong enough to stand on their own. I'm not, I'm, that's the one thing I'm like, if you're going to make these choices, then they need to excel. And if they don't excel, then it, it, they can't stand on their own. That's all, whenever I'm taking in content that's based on, you know, comic movies, comic shows, that's my, if, and that's my biggest critique. I can't, I'm just, that's my biggest deal breaker. Are you going to watch season two if there is one? They got to give me a really good trailer. They got to give me like, okay, whoa, everyone's turning on me and I'm Sam or I'm, uh, oh my gosh, Sheldon. I'm Sheldon and why are they turning on me, guys? I need something, some dialogue like that. It's like, I can't believe you did this. And then I need, a, a, I need them to show me the kid. Yep. Uh, but that would be the last episode, last final cut scene of season two. Okay. If they did that. But I don't know. I don't know. It's, I'm not... Of all the comic book content, uh, this is not this is not the one for you. Invincible, baby. Alrighty, Hannah. Thank you so much for coming on the Camry's Comics podcast. You are welcome. I feel a little bad that we, I especially, really just tore this one apart. It's okay. That's I feel what I, guilty a little bit, and Lizzie Bibb is not going to want to come on the show now. We didn't blame her for anything. No, we didn't. In fact, we said she was the best part. She's my favorite part. Um, and that being the case too, like it's. Uh, for everyone, you know, listening, and if you love the show, I really hope you did. We don't want it. None of us came in wanting to dislike this. We just didn't fall in love with it. And, you know, we were critical on the comic, too, and that's just we what were. happens. We were pretty critical you on know, the comic. No, this is all just our opinion, and, like, yeah. I want you to like this, and, you know, I wanted to like this, too. It just didn't pan out that way. And like you said, either way, it's comic book content. Exactly. It's going to get people out there. <clears throat> that being the case, uh... Thank you, Hannah, for coming on Cameron's Comics. If you are listening, make sure to go follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at Cameron Reads Comics. We're going to have a lot more cool stuff coming from you, and you can definitely expect to see Hannah back. Ooh, and if you're listening on iTunes, make sure to leave us a five-star rating and review. And if you're listening on YouTube, make sure to clobber those like like and subscribe buttons. Uh, Until then, see you later, Hannah. Bye.